All right, folks, we are we are getting started here. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Is that all your apps? All right. Okay, we are live, James Hester. <laughs> all right, we are in the <laughs> in the RV, man. This is exciting. Best place to be right now, isn't it? I'm telling you. Hey, and <laughs> since we're kind of close to each other, I brought <laughs> I brought some uh, there are, <laughs> extra <in>. hand sanitizer. <laughs> Don't get too close yeah, to me now. I'll okay? tell you what. All right, so we're gonna, you know, that's we're, a good we're, idea. We're not fulfilling the uh, exact. <laughs> well, I'm gonna lean over here because James has had things on him way before the <laughs> Corona thing, you know. So well, you never know where you come from. <laughs> You well, make sure you're clean at all times. I was telling James about uh, about the show. I don't know that I recommend it or whatever, but two uh, comedians drinking coffee in cars, or yeah, comedians in cars drinking coffee. Well, today James and I are uh, <laughs> drinking green tea in RVs. So here we are. Anyway, so we're having a good time. Uh, we're we're camping in the midst of this situation, and uh, here we are in Marshall, Texas. So we just wanted to welcome everybody. Uh, we're excited to be here today. We just wanted to discuss the word a little bit and and talk to you. And uh, James, you want to say anything just to uh, welcome? Yeah, James Hester over here in Marshall, Texas. Uh, it's an interesting time we're living in right now. And a guy called me yesterday and. As a good brother would, just checking in with me how things are going and uh, hoping everybody's doing that because everyone's kind of isolated by themselves, so it's good to communicate by phone or by computer. But he kind of called and just uh, wanted, you know, the care was obvious to me and uh, just we started talking yesterday and this was a Sunday and I just, uh, I listened to a couple brothers on, on TV, but I was so stirred yesterday. And, uh, so I, what stirred you yesterday? Well, you know, basically you hit times like this and obviously there's questions that arise in your mind and God, uh, one of the prophetic words we've heard is whatever we do for our obedience to God right now that there would be a response from God. Yes. So obviously he's wanting a, a response in faith and not fear right now. That's one of the big elements. So if I can uh, uh, respond accordingly in faith, uh, to all the circumstances and right. to all the the evil reports, the conspiracies, uh, you know, the uncertainty right now, the right. dread. I mean, there's right. so much in the air right now. So, you know, so my, my I was awakened. I was stirred to seek God for an answer, to inquire, mm. to inquire of the Lord, right. rather than just listening to, to TV, right. and rather than uh, listening to my neighbor. Nothing wrong with that, but you know, the Scripture says you're supposed to seek the Lord. Yeah. and his strength and seek the Lord his face continually that was the scripture I came up with and uh, seek the Lord his face and seek him continually seek him t continually but uh, obviously in times like this when you have more time to yourself <laughs> you know there's just been a lot of uh, uh, a lot of pause right now on normal activities have come to a halt it's yeah. very unusual. Yes. Uh, even in our world, not just the business world, but you know, you go out in the, and I, you travel around the, the streets, whatever you're doing, you're just not seeing people. So it's a very unusual thing. Especially time. for Americans. Yeah. We're so busy yeah. all the time. Yeah. So you saw, you started seeking the Lord. Well, what, yeah. did, he, what did he tell you? <clears throat> or what did he show you? Well, you know, the wisdom was obviously seeking him, but the wisdom was number one, because I'm like that. I, I work like everybody else, and as Americans, we get so busy about our activities. It's one of the things, the cares of this world, and the cares of this life that can choke the word. And uh, right now, you know, one of the biggest things we do, I have five kids at home, there's always something to do, but uh, this time right now, I talked to one other brother is, we have to enter into his rest. Yes. You remember we were up in Branson, we saw this wonderful uh, theatrical play up in Branson, Missouri, uh, about Noah. Yeah. And one of the words for Noah is rest. You mentioned that a yes. couple of weeks ago, but that kind of triggered me that week too. We had a great time, a week of right. rest, but right. then we come in here, and then that's pretty much when the coronavirus started right. after our week of fun up in uh, Branson, right. Missouri. 
we got entertained, we had our, our soul rest, we had fun, and then, but then you're we, not able we, to do we, something. We had a teacher's retreat in Branson, right. Missouri, like right before this really hit in yeah. the United States. Yeah. So we come back to Marshall, and then, uh, you know, school is not starting back. No school. <laughs> so, in uh, you know, jobs, a lot of things are limited right now. So, you know, it's just human nature for us when we don't... When we're not going and doing, and if we have to be still and quiet, because it's not, it's not normal for us just to sit down and have to wait and, and to pause. Right. But uh, well, you know, think of the scripture. Uh, God has to command us in the scripture: "Be still yeah. and know that I am God." Yeah. And then I was listening yesterday to our dear brother Rick Joiner, and he he said the Lord gave him Psalms twenty three. I think it's verse two. Um, the Lord maketh mm, to you lie to lie down yeah. in green pastures. Wow. And it's just interesting, you know, if we will talk later, I'm going to hear, I want to fully hear uh, James's heart here. And I, I don't want to get you distracted, but, yeah. um, you know, just I just want to interject this is that in Exodus 12, when the Passover was occurring, you know, there was this separation between the world and the blood-bought saints. And so in the midst of chaos and stress, you're talking about rest, you yeah. know. And, and it's like when you talk to other believers, it's, it's almost like, you know, unless they're in the medical field or, you know, I was talking to a financial advisor yesterday, and, he, you know, they are just front lines, and we want to make sure that we pray for them before this is over. But... And I talk to a lot of the believers, they're like, I feel so refreshed and I feel yeah. so, you know, they talk a lot about their, their family and I mean, I'm, I'm actually having face to face time with my children and, yeah. and, and not just time, but quality time. Yeah. And so, you know, I think you're going to see this theme as we progress over the next year, two years, five years, 10 years, as we get to the end of the end times, you're going to see the separation between, hmm. you know, just the world and the people of God. There's yeah. going to be a lot of, uh, he said, I'm going to uh, sever, I'm going to separate, you know, what I do with the Egyptians as yeah. to what I do with the Israelites. So I just thought, I just wanted to interject yeah. that, man. So you're talking about rest right yeah. now. Yeah, and in, in Exodus, somewhere there, he said he would put a difference. Yes. between the Israelites and the Egyptians and see the difference is how we respond to this time. So, you know, that that's a big foundational stone. The first one is repentance from dead works. And part of that is learning to cease from your own works. And that's hard to do because yes. you're, you're programmed. I'm, I want to go to work eight to five and but then you can't do it. So you have to enter into his rest. Remember, after six days of creation on the seventh day, the Sabbath, he rested from all his work. So yes. That's the that's the first wisdom I got, James. You're gonna to have to learn to rest. You need to pause. You're pausing, but I want to get you to a place where you're still and you're quiet, so you can really clearly discern my voice. And it's just something about if we don't do that, he has to. Some you know, it's no different than a, your husband or a wife talking to you, but you're passing by. Right. I hear you, but I didn't really heed what you were saying. I'm not engaged. So I see that part of God's strategy in our nation right now is cause us to stop what we're doing so he can do a work within yes but we're so busy without he now, has to now stop you're talking him. to the church now yeah to yes. the church yes. to the church yeah but we have such a hard time doing that because we get a lot of our fulfillment our value by doing yes rather than uh, just sitting and waiting at his feet so that was, that was the biggest thing but in the rest is a reset if we'll learn to rest yes we'll come uh, God will be able to do a work in us and reset uh, push the button if you will and restart us in a new in a new direction and going back to that uh the Passover remember part of that was him I'm trying to get it maybe not ahead of you but uh Go he, ahead. he purged out the old leaven yes. that we may become a new lump yes so there there's a there's a process of becoming something new a new lump purging out the old and, and and going in a new direction but that's that's what i'm describing as uh, a reset yes those old thought patterns the old things uh i talked to a brother the other day just old thought patterns things that have restricted us old uh, habits it could be a, a number of the yes. old man there's all kinds of things yes. uh that old leaven which is a certain type of thinking yes uh, 
So, but to do that, God wants us to, to sit down and uh, after a reset, I saw there's the rest, a resetting, and then a reconstitution. Wow. In that. Rest, reset, yeah, and, and re- reconstitution. reconstitution. I'm, I'm, I'm writing that down. So we could, uh, you know, even in our nation, you can see what God is wanting to do is to reconstitute our nation. Right. You know, morally, obviously within, uh, he's wanting to... Uh, change our laws the laws first within it's easy to, to put that on the government and uh i'm all for uh, against roe versus way but what about in the heart of man right you know god he wants to write his laws upon our hearts and uh and, and our consciousness i'm so aware of that and it's something about when you sit down and you rest you know you become aware of things i've been questioning things you mentioned this to me yesterday about examining if i'm in the faith Yes, you know it's you ponder your direction of your life. See, there are these are all things in the Passover. You should really, uh, again, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but mm-hmm. when you're, uh, it I says it. part of that uh, when you partake of the uh, the bread, and and the uh, basically the body of Christ, the bread, and then the the juice, which is representing His blood. Before you do that, you should examine yourself, yeah. lest you drink and eat unworthily, and you receive damnation or judgment upon yourself because you don't judge yourself, you don't examine yourself, you don't, uh, you know, you don't think about things. Well, am I in the right direction? And see, with America, we're so prideful and we're so busy with our lives, we just assume so much. Right. You know, and this other brother is assuming. Well, we're all going thinking about. Trump being elected, and I'm all for that, but he's saying, no, this is not about the election cycle. America, your economy, you know, one of the big things God's hitting right now is uh, uh, trusting in an uncertain riches, you know. Right. Our economy, you know, I talked to my, my kids just about money, and of course it says it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. So you, you see all these things, part of this pause is it's God's really showing us, okay, what is the motive of your heart? You know, are you really serving me? Are there right. other gods right. that you're serving? You're not aware of it, but you don't know a lot of these things until it's shut down and you start realizing, man, I really rely on that. I really rely on that job or am I really relying right. on Christ, my provider, who provides the job? Yeah. And there's a difference. So some will go in fear, others will go in faith. <clears throat> So it's it's a good time to for God to reconstitute our hearts because if you're in fear, you can get over in faith right now, just by simply having an encounter with Christ and spending time in His Word, praying, seeking God, and letting Him reveal Himself to us. Amen. But it has to be we got to sit down somewhere and stop what we're doing, and I that's part of what I see God doing in our nation right now is is a uh, it's obviously just not stopping to stop. It's to get us somewhere to you reset. Know, yeah, to speak yeah. to us, reset us, and reconstitute us. And, uh, you know, one of the words for reconstitution, a lot of people don't know this. In the scriptures, Jesus said uh, that John the Baptist, or Elias, will come and restore all things. That's the word, reconstitution. It's the same word for restore. But the real root word of it, I thought this was really interesting, it says to reconstitute in health, home, and organization. Health, home, home and, or- and organization. organization. Wow. Of course, coronavirus, I thought of health. Right. Of course, it also says just... Satan to, coming to attack yeah. our health. Right. Yeah. So it's just, you know, back, back to uh, that word also means to make whole. You know, if we'll just stop what we're doing and put our trust in the Lord, we have our health. He'll reconstitute us, body, soul, and spirit. Wow. You know, so... And one of the biggest things right now, like I said about the fear, is, is God has not given us a spirit of fear, but it's a sound mind. A saved mind, you know, right. thinking right. right. That's part of right. soundness and health. Is a lot of times it starts with a thought. Yeah, you know, and this coronavirus to me has been so blown out of proportion. You know, it's magnified itself, and you know, so that's. But to reconstitute, it, you know, it's interesting that word also. It means to uh, to set again, a restore again. But part of that word, as you mentioned, is first a separation. A local separation. Sometimes we have to separate to bring clarification, right? Yes. And uh, things aren't wow. cl- clarified until we stop and we rest and we wait to hear on God. And that's one of the hardest things for us to do is just to wait on the Lord. Yeah. I want to hear now. Yeah. God, what am I supposed to do? It's right. it's a crisis. You and know? I want to get busy yeah. doing something. Yes. And you, yeah. a lot of times you miss God because, again, you're, getting yeah. to your, your, you're being pushed and driven rather than by, led by the Spirit. These are the signs. Right. You're not being led. So... 
that's the hardest thing for me. That was the main thing, James, enter into my rest. Right. If you do, the work's already finished before the foundation of the world. Now, that's I believe that, God, right. you have it already all worked out. I believe in your sovereign plan, right. and that sovereign plan is your sovereign providence. You've already provided for me, whether I'm going to work or not. Whether my wife can do this right. or that, whether my kids are home and I'm having to take care of them. Right. You know, all these things are right. happening, right. these demands, but you have to stop and let God, you know, one of the main scriptures we went uh, prayed the other day was, uh, uh, we know this shall turn through right. our prayers in the supply of the Spirit. 119. Yes, yeah. 119. So the, the, my prayers and the contribution, His supply, yeah. will supply me and furnish exactly what I need for this hour. But we have to stop and receive that supply somewhere. Amen. But we know human nature, we're just going to, God, we're going to figure this out for ourselves and, you know, I'm I'm the man. I I, right. I, I got to figure out if I can supply for my family. How much money do I have in the bank? You know, I'm just talking about. You know, the scripture says even in Exodus. You know, do they do you go to the arm of the flesh or are you calling upon the name of the Lord? Right. So, I see God. Him really. Obviously, it's a test right. to the church. Are y'all really? And right. I know you know the Word of God in Samaria's, but you know, is it going to be proven? Your faith right. has to be proven, genuine. Um, was well, it real? You know, I was ta- I was teaching the other day mm-hmm. on on uh, Facebook or somewhere three fears that I saw that it revealed. Now, for the world, that's normal, but three yeah. fear- fears we got to look at in the church is the fear of sickness. Do we mm-hmm. have a fear of sickness? You know, and in our fellowship for the last what three, four, five months, it's been exercising, increasing our faith toward. Mm-hmm sickness and disease yeah. right uh, do we believe the report that Isaiah 53 said when he said you know who has believed my report for you know by my stripes you are healed you know and do but do you do you believe that when it's happening then the other fear is the fear of the loss of luxury or comfort mm, you know convenience. yeah wow. I was talking to the guys a, a week or two ago about the need for toilet paper you know it's <laughs> it's it, you know it yeah. speaks kind of to our generation it's soft and cuddly <laughs> you know it's like the teddy bears right. you know it's going to it's going to it's going to comfort me yeah. it feels In my good time of trouble <laughs> right right and and as americans we love our comfort and mm-hmm. our luxury and the fear of losing that paul said i i am been i've learned to be content which is another statement of rest in whatsoever situation I'm in, and I can do all things, you know, the the scripture that y'all all all know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But in the context of that scripture was he was going through severe trials. And, you know, our trials, I mean, and, and again, I don't mean to make light of, I mean, we got people dying and, you know, it's, I mean, you know, the, the heart of compassion is there and we want to root on what you know the efforts that are going on but compared to the trial that Paul was going through yeah. it's not quite as severe but he said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me I can endure shipwreck I can endure disease I can endure snake bite I can endure beatings I can you know endure all these things um, as well as I know how to handle things when I'm comforted and you know everything's going really well yeah. you know and so uh, learning to be content learning to have a, a state of rest yeah. you know in the in the middle of that you know yeah. is, is important so um, yeah and then I was watching the Bob Jones prophecy the other day mm. did you see that Mm-mm. well it was a, it that. was a, a if, if y'all get a chance to watch that Bob Jones prophecy his wife put it on uh, six days ago she said I want y'all to I want you the body of Christ to go back and look at it and it's very uh, very interesting because he prophesied 2000 he prophesied 10 years in advance that the 2020s would be the decade wow. of rest Wow <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, that's what he prophesied. Wow. And he prophesied uh, 2010, 2020, 2030, 2040. But anyway, I just thought that that was mm-hmm. interesting uh, that he was prophesying rest, yeah. you know, for this decade. Yeah. 
and and Noah, you know, Noah was in the middle of this violent situation. Yeah. But we've been, uh, James has been alluding, we've been talking a lot about Passover. And Brother Randy, was it two weeks ago, we celebrated a Passover when we, we, uh, we you know, a lot of people call it communion, but it's mm-hmm. really, truly, it's a celebration of it's you know he said that you would observe this feast for uh, through the generations forever is what he said mm. and so we took the uh, took the cup and we took the bread and we examined ourselves I did not realize that we'd be participating in a Passover celebration for a month yeah. and so then I began to study Passover and began to see that it um, oh the last fear that I saw that third fear was the fear of death Hmm. you know and oh death where's your sting so these are all three fears that we have to make sure the fear of sickness you know Mm. I'm healed the fear of the loss of uh, luxury uh, I'm content in any circumstance at any you know if I'm a lot if I'm Elijah and it's and I'm in a major famine for three years. I know the birds can feed me, right? If right. if I have to. So we, yeah. our faith is the body of Christ has got to increase. Yeah. And then the fear of death, absent with the body, absent from the uh, body, present with the Lord. Yeah. And so these are foundational principles that we can go back to uh, Hebrews chapter six. And you mentioned uh, faith. Uh, you mentioned uh, okay. repentance from dead works, yeah. faith towards God. Uh, eternal judgment I've got to know where I'm going if I do I'm confident in what I'm doing now and so uh, shifting back to this Passover uh, Exodus chapter 2 he said that he would go in and you're talking a lot about he said he would judge the gods of Egypt Mm -hmm. and we can see where we picked up maybe some of these gods of Egypt you know and just on the external you know your entertainment is down which hmm. man, that's that's a great Huge movie, brings a great yeah. rest in, yeah. in a, you know a great noise is silence yeah. for just a minute. It, it brings down you know, I, and I'm an athletic director, and I and James and I love sports, but it brings down the idol of sports for a minute. Yeah. Um, and and you oh, know yeah. March Madness. I mean, yeah. you know, we we, we don't want to see anything. You know, we don't want to see people uh, hurt or you know whatever their their yeah them. their their livelihood. But but sometimes just the break in it is just it brings peace. It brings yeah. okay. Now I've got to be quiet for a minute and hear what God is saying. Yeah. Some other things he said he would smite the firstborn on the Passover. Oh wow. So church, yeah. he's 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 going to the church first. He says whatever he's going to do, he's going to do with the church of America first. And he wants God wants the church to be a lively lively stones. He wants it to be a dedicated. He wants it to be a Revelation twelve ten church that we would overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of His testimony, that we'd fall in love again and and really realize the blood of the Mm. lamb what that blood did a lamb for a house Mm. the blood of jesus what did it really do um the word the to love to fall in love with the word again and then to love not our lives unto the death to to that's a to me that's been my prayer for the american church is that you know we wouldn't be a weak church anymore but through this we become a vibrant robust holy I just really believe that that part of this process, we know that what the devil's trying to do in it, he's, he comes to kill. John 10, 10 says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But but what God is working in this is a refinement. You know, he's working a, um, uh, he's, he's, he's searching out the gods of Egypt and taking those out of our heart. If we'll allow him, if we'll uh, allow this work to go go on yeah. this pa- to do this Passover Passover is two things it is celebrating what God did for us and remembering it and bringing it to our households and bringing it to the nation and bringing it to the church and it's getting the leaven out of our lives That's a big and, one, yeah. and and the leaven is wherever this this firstborn wherever that firstborn and and to the Christian uh, that firstborn is that soul carnal realm, that fleshly, that that guy that prefers himself over the things of God. 
And so in Passover, he's mm. striking, he's smite, he said he's gonna smite the firstborn. Lord, smite my firstborn, that my secondborn, that this spirit man would rule. And, and, and I'm just prophesying to you in the American church that this, if, if you will allow this Passover season, this, this holy hush, that God is preparing a, a harvest ready church, that the American church is getting shaken, and just as Trump is saying that our economy may may be stilted for a moment, but it's going to come into a great resurgence, or as yeah. James said, a reconstitution, that the American church is going through a it, it's going through a refinement right now. And I, you mentioned to me about Haggai yeah. yesterday. You 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 want to share something or? I mean, yeah, or just, whatever uh, God's put on well, your heart. Well, it's there. just, you know, because he hit all these fears, the comforts. Uh, you know, the thing is, you don't want to go to other things right now to to please your soul. You know, a lot of times when we're denied, we go find something else that will satisfy us. Yes, yeah. You don't want to go, you know, suck on a... Uh, on the uh, the bottle somewhere else, you know, comfort food is one thing. You know, entertainment, all these things that uh, they're not necessarily bad, but if they take the place of God, right? So he's yeah, shaking yeah. our nation right now. In uh, Hebrews, it talks about all things that can be shaken will be shaken. He's shaking not only the earth but the heavens also. So, in the shaking, there's an agitation. God from time to time will come and kind of shake us, the church. We always it's easier to say, "Oh, the world's being shaken." You know, first judgment must begin first right. with the house of God. So right. you got to make that clear biblically. And so he shakes and he agitates. But when you get agitated, I've been agitated during this time, you know. Uh, out of your comfort out zone. Out of your comfort yeah. zone. Things aren't going like we thought they would be. Oh, I've got five kids at home. What am I going to do with the kids? They should be at school. <laughs> you know, you have... You, <laughs> you know, should be are, with brother guy right Yeah, now. I mean, these are all normal <laughs> things you go through. But see, during that time when you're agitated, do you go to the Lord or are you going to go... You know, the world may go to alcohol, drugs, any kind of entertainment to fill that void. Addictions. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to fill the void with stuff. You want to go to the God. That's what he's right. looking for right now. If you can make that, uh, that's a type of, uh, you know, talking about eating unleavened bread. Leavened bread, in, in our life, it really means self-rising. So anytime I meet a circumstance, if I'm not going to go in faith, myself will rise to the occasion and God can't do anything with that firstborn. Right. In fact, it's enmity against God. It can't please God. It's not subject to God. I'm talking about the first man, or the old man, the carnal man. And so that's, he will rise up during that time, right. during hard circumstances. When the shaking comes, it really reveals where we're at. It's easy to say, I have faith towards God, but your character is revealed during that time, during the time of the trial of your faith. So a lot of people were getting tried right now in our faith. But if we can look at it from God's perspective, is that he'll refine, like you said, refine our faith, take yeah. us to the next level of our faith towards God. But don't look to other things right now. And if, if you are, that shows you that could be a God to you. It could be right. it could be eating, it could be TV, it could be whatever you're used to doing. If, if it's taken away from you, can you still be content with God and go to him and say, God, and, and here's, the, here's the distinction, Lord, you're speaking through circumstances right now and I'm aware you're trying to get my attention. Will you? you know, I hear yeah. him saying, "Will you come to me? Right. Coming to me, you are heavy uh, laden. You've been working a lot. I know there's a lot going on. He's aware of all these things, but will you come to him? If you come to him, the reconstitution. This he'll take you to that next level. But a lot of people. That's that's my part. I really believe you've got to make a, a, a decision to to seek the Lord. And he said basically. He's a rewarder if you diligently seek him. So we have to be seeking God right now. And don't go to the news media to try to figure out what's going on to, to comfort yourself. The interpretation. Yeah. yeah. Go to the Lord right now. And a lot of times, I'm not always getting understanding. A lot of it is trust. You don't want to lean on your own understanding, the scripture says. But with all your heart, you need to trust the Lord right now. Amen. But it's really revealing who we are right now. Right. And I'm okay. You know, I make a mistake with it. I see in areas that I'm in intimidation and fear and trepidation. Well, that's why you just, you see it for what it is. That's your old man. And you, you say, you know what, God, uh, I'm going to plead the blood. I'm going to die to this old man. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take out that old leaven, that old, old thought process is where it's always about me. And right. I'm going to go through and you're going to pass over and I'm going to be a changed man by the end of the... We'll be changed. Right. And it, so the one thing about uh, 
uh, and I'm, again, I'm getting ahead of myself, no, but on no, this Passover, remember, Passover. the Passover, there had to be a sacrifice. Something had to die. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's me, not just right. Jesus. He said, take up your cross. Right. Deny yourself and follow me. So again, that's another religious old leaven there. Well, Jesus died for me. Well, and we're all just ready to go to heaven. Circumcision. Oh, yeah. He's going to die now. We're going through some kind of a circumcision <clears throat> to, to the church, which is any discipline that he's factoring in here is is a sign of great love. The Father wants to get us yeah. to a certain point right. because of uh, you know his love. What his he wants love. us to be a part of. There's there's great glory coming, there's great presence, there's great outpourings, uh, there's great harvest, you know, yeah. for our internal lives as well as our external I mean the Bob Jones prophecy, he started talking about build barns, build barns. He goes, you know, does your current church can it can it hold uh, fifty thousand new converts in one week? I mean, this wow. is what he started talking about, wow. and I, you know, I don't want to get too far off track here, but I mean, <laughs> that's encourage. I mean, I mean, that is so fun to talk about, though, because yeah. that's that's the kind of you know excitement that yeah. we have to look forward to. But the Lord gave me a scripture the other day, and it, and it was. Um, you know, don't sleep in this hour. Uh, the statement was, or you'll beg and harvest. You know, it's if you're uh, slothful in this hour, I can't remember the, I don't want to take time to, but it's in Proverbs. And it says, if you're slothful, the slothful man will beg in harvest time. Mm -hmm. And so my, my uh, cross-country coach always talked to me about past, in the race, pass when no one else wants to pass. Learn, strengthen your body, and put the work in when no one else is putting it in, and pass on the hill. Wow. And so, you know, it's kind of counterintuitive right now. Like, this is, I'm just trying to survive this, but what if you pressed in, like James was saying, and really dug in to pursuing God? and use this opportunity in a kind of a shutdown situation and really went to that secret place. And, you know, we talk about the uh, go to the holy place and say, God, not only are you working in here, but you're actually about to slingshot me forward. Wow. You know, and yeah. so I'm going to really celebrate this Passover and I'm going to look at every area of my life. I'm going to put you first. I'm going to seek you. I'm going to ask you to put a new, fresh zeal, zeal of the Lord of hosts, the zeal of your house hath consumed me, and a fresh hunger, you know. Yeah. And I wanted to read this scripture. So so you you, you don't, don't um, I think Lance Walnall said, take advantage of this hour. Because this is a, this is a catapulting hour where it, it says, the Bible says, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith and judge yourself, you know. Mm. I mean, you know, Planet Fitness, they say, you know, don't judgment. Well, you, it takes judgment. You, if you hadn't judged yourself, you're not going to go to that gym. You know, right. you say, I've gotten a little bit overweight, so I, I need to go work out. So that's a, you have to make a healthy <laughs> a judgment. A judgment call. Yeah, yeah, you, I mean, I. got to make a determination. It, and, if I judge that I'm 20 pounds overweight, then that's a good judgment because that's judgment unto victory, right? Wow. And so God's he, he's sweeping over and saying, okay, and you know, Brother Randy met with us Monday night, last Monday, and there was a examining of marriages, you mm -hmm. know, and so going home and asking your wife, hey, where am I doing well? Where am I doing poorly? And <laughs>